Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today, we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Assassin's Creed. Continuing, but this is the first video. You're right, Jason did a great job on the intro video, so I wanted to just move right into the real videos of this game. So we're going into sequence one. If you're interested in seeing the first four intro videos for this, please go check them out over on Meet Me at the Table. I'll put a link to those videos up here, up here, wherever it appears. It's going to be appearing somewhere, and I'll also put them in the description of the video as well. Moving into this particular mission, there will be spoilers, so I want you to bear that in mind as you watch the video. So if you're not interested in any of the game being spoiled, then this might not be the video for you. But do remember that the intro scenarios are really just intros, and they explain how the game is played, and it's a really cool way of diving into Assassin's Creed. We're going to be using our characters Claudio and Alessandria from our intro, and we're going to dive into sequence one. And if you're excited to do that, then I need you... To meet me at the co-op shop. Maybe you might get hurt. Maybe you might get hurt. It wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time. Oh, oh. oh. At the end of our last video, we were able to find our headquarters, and I'm excited to dig into this part of the game. It says here, you now have your headquarters, from which you will further help the cause of the Brotherhood of Assassins. Venice is famous for its housing problem. Is in The lagoon makes expanding the city extremely complicated. We will have to collaborate with our neighbors. You can forge partnerships with a group of courtesans, experts at diverting the attention of the city guards, or you can approach the guild of mercenaries who will help you in combat, but will not fail to attract a bunch of opportunities for confrontations. We have to choose between these two different headquarter concepts, the courtesans or the mercenaries. We're going to open the envelope that we have chosen and we're going to continue forward. This is a big milestone moment here because our choice here is going to decide what our headquarters is all about. When it comes to replayability, right here alone, we have two completely different ways this game could be going in the future. Here are the two envelopes. Which one are we going to choose? We're going to choose. We're going to choose number one because it's number one. <laughs> That's the only reason. So we're going to get this envelope opened up and see what's in store. Before we look at the contents of the envelope, it did tell us that we have to choose the side that we have chosen. This is the mercenary side. This is the courtesan side. So this is going to be pretty sweet. I'm going to put it this way so that we have all the icons facing in the right direction. This is going to be pretty cool. Let's take a look at what is inside our envelope. We have, of course, the warning. Read this card before taking any other cards. We're going to look at and place three large brown cards next to the headquarters. We're also going to look and take one of these cards and shuffle the other three into the equipment deck. We're not going to look at these and place the deck of small contracts cards without shuffling them in the headquarters command room. Then we're going to look and take four courtesan miniatures and the four assassin apprentice miniatures from the game box and place them next to the headquarters. All right, this is pretty awesome. So we're going to remove this card and we're going to, oh, here's our four brown cards. Let's take a look. We have the courtesans here. It says on the map, you must have one courtesan miniature to play each courtesan equipment card. In the HQ for each courtesan hospital, take as many damage as the level of your headquarters and assign them to one assassin in the hospital and then add one more for each courtesan or at most or give back one to assassin outside of the hospital workshop lower the cost by one shop keep one equipment card command room roll one attack dice so that's the courtesans we have the assassin apprentice when they're on the map the assassin apprentice in the hospital are replaced by assassin apprentices so you don't want to go to the hospital that's bad news in the hq for each assassin apprentice you can do these take as many damage as the level of your headquarters and assign them to your assassin or hospital or give back one to the wounded assassin outside of the hospital very same with the courtesan that's fantastic and the same thing here and lastly we have 
Ezio, he's here too. You can call on Ezio with the assassin skill cards provided you have his miniature. I do have his miniature. It says here I can take as many level. Okay, so the same thing about the hospital. I in the workshop I can lower the cost by one. I can keep one equipment card in the command room. I roll two dice instead of one. That's pretty awesome. So we're gonna place those down right next to our command center, our headquarters, right there. We're going to grab our four courtesans, and I'm just going to put them down on their card for right now. We'll place them out on the board when I decide what I'm exactly going to do. We do have our Assassin Apprentice. I'm going to put them out here as well. You may notice that some of these are not painted, and that's because as I unboxed this on my channel, I decided that we were going to move forward by painting as we play. That was what the vote was from the unboxing. So a lot of these aren't painted, but I'm painting them as we go, and I'm doing as fast as I can. So we have all of our miniatures out there where they're supposed to go on their cards. We'll continue forward here with the the opening of the next pack. The next thing our card told us to do was to grab all of the new equipment. We can turn them over, choose one, and then we can, they're all the same. <laughs> They might not be, some of the writing might be different. It says one courtesan miniature required, play one, place the miniature on the nearby square. During this turn, perform a detection test with two less dice on the square, but always roll at least one. Remove the miniature from the map at the end of the turn. Okay, so they're gonna come on and help us out. Place one miniature. I think these are all gonna be exactly the same. They are all exactly the same. So I get to add one to our group, and then the other are going to be mixed into the equipment deck that we have been slowly gathering through our playthrough of the, the intro scenario. So we're gonna mix those up and place them back over on the side. They're all set. I gave him a good old truffle shuffle. It did tell me to take our contracts, not look at them, and place them down right here in the command center. With that complete, we are going to return this to the box. I have no idea what's in here and what it's going to do. So that is it for our setup of our headquarters. Since this is the first time we have ever used the headquarters, there's a list of actions that you're going to perform according to the rule book just to demonstrate how all of this works. First off, I'm sure you've noticed I put these in the wrong spot. They're supposed to over here in the headquarters room. We first are going to take out any of our eliminated assassins and put them here. None of our assassins were eliminated during the adventure. We're going to continue by putting the flying machine blueprint right here so that we can, this is the, one of the areas we can put people to help try to build this, which would be kind of cool. I'd like to see what that thing does at some point. Next, we're going to reveal the contract card one, which is right here, and we're going to read it. So let's take a look. It says, it the source. Leah Cantro and her Cortigan on set will be uh, your allies. They offer to bribe some informants in order to check in the area. Let's see here. We have two things here. If you get 100% sync in your last memory, remove one from this contract difficulty. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. So it has two difficulty and it, I can remove one if we're able to 100% sync. We're going to place that down right there. Now, of course, I don't exactly understand how that works. And of course, we will find out as we continue forward here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place all the cards contained in our Vila envelope. And we're going to place them right down there. These, of course, are all the rewards we gained from our missions and the piece of armor from the chest. So they'll go there. And like I've said before in the intro videos, we could bring another assassin with us. And look, he's already got all the stuff that our assassins we already have. <laughs> they need the same equipment, which is pretty cool. So it's neat that you can bring in other assassins as you play through. So if a buddy came over, you could then play with them as well. It's going to be pretty neat. At this point, we are now going to make up two different groups of miniatures, a memory group and a headquarters group. The memory group will be available for the next memory. The following miniatures make up the memory group. Your assassins, which is basically any assassin on a red hospital space is replaced by an assassin apprentice. So you, that's not going to happen. So we're going to use these two are going to be part of our memory group because those are the two we are playing. Also on top of that, we are going to have Ezio be part of the memory group and we're going to choose one courtesan or mercenary. We only have courtesans, so we're going to choose that one right there. That is our memory group. Next, we have the headquarter group, and what it's telling me to do is place one here on the white squares, one of our courtesans in the hospital. We're going to place one in the workshop. We're going to also place one in the command room and one in the shop. So I'll place one in the shop. Where's the shop? I'm going to guess it's right here. Yep, because it's got a bag symbol, and we're going to place one 
right here in the command center. And then it says if there's any other miniatures to place them right here in the command center. That's really gonna do it for the headquarters. These are, like I said, part of the memory group. So they're gonna be going into the next mission, meaning we do have a chance at bringing this guy out on the board. When he's on the map, you can call him in with the assassin skill cards provided you have the miniature. Well, I don't have the assassin skill card yet, but that's okay. But apparently that's how it told me to set this up. We're gonna see how it all transpires. The reason these certain miniatures are out here is after a memory, you're gonna come back and take advantage of what has been happening while you were out on that memory, which is kind of cool. So they're gonna be doing doing stuff for you while you're out on your memory and hopefully we'll be able to take care of this right away that'd be really neat and hopefully we can get our blueprint done hopefully we do not have anybody end up in the red bed because that's bad news <laughs> that means they went through a critical condition and probably died as an example when we come back for our next mission i will explain how each one of these different areas work but i want to just show you that this is how you place them but when we resolve them it'll be after the memory so let's go to the memory and see what happens here we go sequence one memory 1.1 1 .1, the mask Thanks to our efforts, the headquarters of the Venetian branch of the Brotherhood of Assassins are now established. The Dodge Leonardo Lorenden, once a loyal ally of the Assassins, has now put a spoke in our wheel. Our friend and ally, Pope Julius II, asked us to investigate in order to get some more insight. We know there is an explanation for the Dodge's strange behavior. This explanation is found in a coded document enclosed in a safe in the vault room of the Palazzo del Che. First step, find the keys to enter the vault and the cipher to decode the documents. All right, we're going to go ahead and check out how this is all going to play out. And I, again, I will apologize for any of the words that I mispronounced on here. I am not a linguist. I apologize. Our map is all set up based on the setup and is a super panned out view. This is not how we're going to be playing, but I just want to show you everything that is on this map. We're going to continue with the setup by putting down our first objective here. We have the objective marker, which is going to cost us one action to be able to complete. I don't know which objective this is or what it even is going to do, but there is a crossbow guy guarding it. He's my favorite crossbow guy because he forgot to load his crossbow. We also have this one. This one has two. And of course, we do have a few of these crossbow guys all painted up, so they're kind of neat looking. We're going to put this one down over here with our second objective. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that one is. Of course, we have an idea. We have to find this vault and um, decode a message. We have our fast travel point right here. We're going to place it right down where it goes there. Next, we have two of these hiding spots. We're gonna place one here, and we're gonna place one there. We can hide inside those as long as we are incognito. Otherwise, they're gonna be able to find us. We have a couple ladders, and we'll put those out. One is gonna be in between these places. And from our last playthroughs of the intro missions, remember these crossbow guys, from what, I, from what we understand, cannot go up on top of these roofs unless, of course, they can use one of these ladders. Now, this may change as we open up some of the envelopes, which is a cool thing about this game. This game develops as you continue to play. New mo and enemies might appear or the enemies may change the way they react based on cards that you may get from these envelopes. It's really kind of cool. There is only one more miniature left to place out on the board and that of course is my giant tower. I sadly have not finished the top part of the tower but the bottom part of the tower is all set to go. We're going to place it right there. Of course that is going to block the view of there but I will be adjusting camera angles so that we'll be able to maneuver around this tower. It's just super cool and I always want to have this on the board because it looks so awesome. There are four more things we have to place out and these are where our reinforcements are going to come from. A is going to be placed right up there. We're going to be placing B down over here where he is. It might be a little off camera, but it's right underneath where he is. Next we have C is going to be placed over here next to where this tower is and D is over here on top of this. And when I went to place that D, I did notice there is one more ladder that is placed right there. I missed that ladder and I also missed the ladder coming from this place over there. There are four ladders total, not the two I originally placed out on the board. That's it. That's the setup of our map. Let's go ahead and continue. At this point, we are told to open envelope 1.1, so let's take a look inside. Just like the previous envelopes, it starts with one of these cards here. I do not get to look at and shuffle the three equipment cards in the equipment deck. We're going to shuffle the four event cards and place them on top of the event deck. So this event deck continues to keep growing, but it's kind of, like I've said before, it's kind of cool that they keep putting the new ones on top so far, so at least you're kind of playing with those first. You're going to see some of the stuff that may happen as you continue in the game. We'll place the 
tower card on the table and here it says you can look at and you can change your outfit as you wish put unused cards back in the assassin so we already have we have cosmetics in the game already that's awesome we are going to leave the small reward cards in the envelope then i'm going to flip this card and keep it near you and on the back here it does have all of the new player aids and down here it has the headquarter resolution that we'll be doing at the end of our turn phase when we finally complete our mission from how i understand over on our enemy board here the two enemies have not changed we do have our a reinforcement deck all set to go. We start, of course, on the green. Thank goodness. Let's keep it green as long as we can. We're going to take our equipment and the new ones we have, mix them in here and give them a good old truffle shuffle. Nothing like putting a whole bunch more parachutes in there. I have no idea what they are, but <laughs> I do seem to get a lot of parachutes. We're going to have our chest cards have not changed at all either. We're going to grab our four event cards, shuffle them up, give them a good old truffle shuffle here and place them down on top of this deck, which I am going to give a good old truffle shuffle to as well so that we can keep all these decks nice and mixed together. We'll place these on top, which still, like I said, is really cool that we get to see those first. We're going to take this card and place it back into the envelope. And that's about it. The only thing we have left is all of these cosmetic cards. So we could change what Alexandria or Alessandria looks like. We might do that because I kind of like the black that she has on there as opposed to the white. Though I've already painted her white, so maybe we'll keep her white. <laughs> With Claudio, I don't think much has changed on him. His shirt color is black now instead, and so I think he's got these blacker pants. But again, this is all purely cosmetic. I don't know if I'm going to change the card up because, like I said, I've already painted up the miniature. So I don't know if I'm going to change it. All right, there we go. That's ready to go. We're going to grab our play rate, place it right down here. And that is our enemy board and our setup for anything we're going to be taking place during the game. Here are the two objectives, and it says we can do them in any order of our choice. The one with the one is going to steal the key, and the one with the two is we're going to find the cipher for the and to decode the document we are going to attempt to try to do the 100 sync we'll see if it works it says catch me if you can i have to escape from one plus guards hunting you by climbing onto a roof we shall see if we can do that <laughs> <laughs> maybe kind of tough. I like it better when I just have to like assassinate somebody or maybe just hide in a building or something. But nope, we're going to have to try to have somebody hunt me. We'll place our two assassins, Alessandria and also Claudio, right next to the fast travel point. At this point, I'll read you a little bit of the story of the Dodge or Doge. I apologize, I don't know which way to say it. In Venice, the Doge is the first magistrate of the Republicans of Venice in Genoa. He is elected for life from the Palazzo del Cui. He leads the armies, presides over the Senate, can declare war and sign peace. He's responsible to the Council of Ten, an assembly made up of the lords of the most powerful Venetian families. The current Dodge, elected in 1501, is Leonardo Lorenden. He is a cultured merchant and a fine politician. At this point, we'll begin the game. We'll look at our player aid and start here on top. It says event phase. So during the event phase, we're just going to draw the top event and see what it says. We have call. During the assassin phase, if one assassin spends one action, they call a companion to create a diversion. During the enemy movement step, choose the direction, north, south, east, or west, in which the guards will move, except for those near a red token who must move toward it as usual. I'm going to place a reminder token on the enemy reinforcement deck to remind us of this. Well, that's kind of cool. I don't know if I'm going to take advantage of that because it's our first turn. Maybe if that had been the third card or something, it might help out. We'll start with our first assassin, Alessandria. Now remember, when you do control your assassins, you can do them in any order you want and interrupt actions between each other. Well, not interrupt, but if I decide to use one movement, I can use one action to move. Now, I still have two movement or two actions left with Alessandria, but I don't have to use them right now. I could use Claudio next, and I am. He's going to use one action to move over to that roof right there. Then I'm going to move back to Alessandria. She's going to use another two cubes to come running down to this area right here. She's going to stop right there. Now, I am right next to a potential reinforcement area here, but the order of operations is you're placing reinforcements, moving re your enemies, and then you're going to attack. The good thing about this is we know all of our enemies are going to move north, so putting her over here is not going to cause an issue. These are not going to come this way at us, which is pretty good. So that's why she's going to stay there. Meanwhile, over here, Claudio is going to use one more of his actions to move over to this location here, and he is going to save his next his extra action that he has. In case you missed my intro videos on how to play the game, one of the options we have under our player aid here is save one action.
action. Since I did not use this action, I can gain one extra action cube and place it right there. Now, when it comes to our turn, when we go to back to the beginning of our rounds, we'll be able to gain three actions and we'll be able to hold this action until we ever decide to use it. It's pretty valuable to do. Now, I didn't use it with Alessandria because she I knew I could get her next to that first objective. And we'll see if we can maybe get it. Here are just a, some idea of some of the other things we can do. We have complete objectives. We could trade. We can equip. We can climb towers and synchronize. We can search and hide bodies. And like I was doing earlier, I was using one action cube to move. We can use equipment and attack based on the amount of action cubes it shows here on their cards. And also, we can use a fast travel station to get out at the end. Now, of course, the only way to leave any of these memories is through a fast travel. So not only do you have to complete the objectives, you have to get back and get through that fast travel station. We're going to flip over our first reinforcement card here. And remember, I did not take any action, so I don't get to have a manipulation of their movement, but that's okay. We are still in the green area here, so we're going to put down one of our agile guards on A, two of our crossbowmen on B, and another one on C. So let's go fill up the board. The one on C will go right there. Two crossbowmen are going to come in right here on B, and they're going to attach themselves to this objective. That is what they're going to do. And our super gray painted, not painted, Agile Guard is going to go over here and protect that objective. With our reinforcement step complete, we'll move into the movement step. So all of our enemies are going to move based on our card here. So they're all going to move north. So this guy will move one square in that direction. He really is the only one that's going to move because as you saw me placing the miniatures, they are going to attach themselves to those objectives until the objective is completed. Once the objective is completed, they're free to move around according to the cards, but they want to protect that objective. That is their main mission. They will not move off it unless some certain card or rule comes into play. With the movement step complete, we will go up to the top where it says end of turn phase. The end of turn phase, really the only thing we're checking for is to see if we've completed objectives and gotten out of here. No, we have not. So we are going to continue. We'll move right back to the event phase. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect all of the cubes that we use during our turn and we'll place them back on our boards. We're going to draw a new event card and see what happens. We're going to discard that one and draw another one. We have cover up. During this turn, each time you search after hiding one body, ignore and discard any investigation cards and draw one new equipment card to replace it. Place a reminder token on the equipment deck to remind us of this. That sounds like a plan. I'm going to move this reminder to there. We have kind of hit a snag in my potential plan. My plan was to have her go over here and him go over there and take care of both these objectives at the same time. But now with three guards here, I would have to roll three dice when I move into that place. And if I get any one of these symbols, we're going to have to flip this to the alert side and that will be bad news. That means almost double the amount of reinforcements are going to start pouring in on us. And that's way too early in this mission to have that happen. I'm going to have to adjust my plans a little bit. They're not that great, but our goal is to remain hidden as long as we can. I'm going to use three action cubes. I'm going to move Claudio one, two, three, just like that. I know it's almost a waste to send him that way. Should never have split the party house so bad. I do want to make you aware of these canal tokens here. Canal tokens, we are able to move through without any problem, but if an assassin is ever in them, he, they have to stay in the water. And if any guards are in them, they're going to stay off of the water. And they can attack anywhere, but the assassins, if you can see by this little notation right here, cannot use ranged weapons in this location. At this point, I am going to use that fourth action cube that I have to go ahead and use the courtesan. The way the card is going to work is I get to use an action to place the miniature on a nearby square during this turn, perform a detection test with negative two dice, but I still have to at least roll one. I then going to remove the miniature from the map at the end of the turn, and I have to discard this card into the equipment deck. So we'll do that really quick. I'm going to place that miniature that we added to the memory board right here. It gets to go into a nearby space, and nearby space is anything that is orthogonal that you can see. So we're going to put it there, which means these will have negative two dice, so instead of rolling three dice when she moves in, it's only going to be one. She's going to spend her first action to move in here and hopefully try to remain incognito. We'll take our die and roll it up and see what we get. We got a blank! That's fantastic! So we've used one action to move in. I'm going to use my other two action cubes for her to complete this objective. You can complete the objective if there are en enemies on the square, as long as you're still incognito, and I am. So I will place this down on her character board. One of our objectives is complete, and look how much better we do when we cooperate together. Silly me for splitting them up. What was I doing? That's going to be the end of the assassin's turn. 
Interestingly enough, if I can get out of here with just moving away and not triggering these enemies, that's going to be fantastic. This game is not about destroying enemies. You don't have to actually kill anybody to get these done. Remember, your only goal in this is to complete the objectives. Of course, we have that 100% sync, which we want to try to get somebody to chase me and I can elude them on top of a roof. We'll see if that comes into play, but I don't need to kill them if I don't have to. Moving into the reinforcement step, we're going to draw our next card and see what we have found. We have, oh my gosh, look at this, two in A. That's exactly where I'm going next. Oh my gosh, lots of guys. One in B, and we're going to put one in C yet again. And nothing in D. D is apparently nobody wants to go over where our save point is or our fast travel location is. We'll place one crossbow guy here in C, and we'll place the other two over here in A, and one is going to attach themselves to this objective, and the other one is just going to hang out in the square. So when it comes to moving, they could move away from this if they need to. Of course, the problem is they're going to be moving north. I haven't placed the other enemy yet, but I'm just going to move this guy north since I'm here with this camera. The other one is going to stay right where it is because, well, he doesn't want to leave the map. He's going to stay right where on that thing. This final one is going to come out on B, and when he enters this square, I have to do a detection test because he's just kind of patrolling in, and I might be hiding right where he can see me. Let's see how it goes. I was not where he could see me. It does look like it was going to be able to alert him, but this only is going to be a detection success if the alert symbol is on the red side and everybody is alerted. So he does, again, not know I'm there. He's just kind of hanging out over here, and I'm hiding over in the corner over here. He can't see me behind this desk. Oh, I'm tricky, tricky. At the end of turn, I am going to remove this miniature. That's how it goes. And we'll move into the event phase. So at this point, I will discard that event and draw a new one. We have hurry up. During the enemy movement step, the enemies move one extra square in the same direction. So I'll place this on the enemy reinforcement deck to remind myself of that. That's fantastic. Okay, I've put our token right up there on that thing, and we'll move into our assassin's turn. Before we start our turn, I am going to move him one space north, uh, which I forgot to do when we went to the enemy movement step. I moved this guy, but I forgot to move the other guy. We've completed one of our objectives. Let's get to the other one. I'm going to start with Alessandria. One, two, three. She's going to move right there. He's going to move one, two, three. That's the end of our turn. I know it's pretty quick, but we need to get to this next objective, and then we have to figure out how we're going to deal with it. At this point, we'll draw our next enemy reinforcement card, and I'm going to place that over here to remind myself again that they're going to move extra this time. We have one that's going to be placed in A, B, and C, and again, nothing in D. Wow, look at that's out of control. Okay. <laughs> We'll go place our dudes. Looking at B, there are already one, two, three, four enemies there. You can't have more than four in a location. So our remaining crossbowman that would normally spawn here on B is not going to spawn. He is not able to come to the party. But there's nobody here at C, so this crossbow guy can totally come in. And the last one would be an agile warrior or guard is going to come out on A. But again, as you can see, there are four enemies there, so we'll not be placing one. At this point, we have four guards over here that are going to move south. One one and one and because of our event we're going to move an extra one they're going to come running down this way apparently they must have heard something down at this fountain maybe somebody threw gold in there and they're going to go get it who knows we have one guard up here that is going to move one two he's going to move south two these of course will not leave because they're protecting that objective everybody that is down here at b they're not going to move south because they don't want to leave the map we would move into combat next but there is no combat because we haven't been found and we're not fighting anything the next one we have is Lookout. Immediately add one crossbowman to the top of the tower. After climbing the tower, you will now need to spend one action to eliminate him before synchronizing. Then return his miniature to the enemy reserve. Note, the crossbowmen cannot move or perform detection tests. Well, that's funny. All right, let's do that. We'll place him right up here with the swinging bell guys. <laughs> he looks kind of cool just hanging out. Hey, he matches the color. Gray. Here's what we're going to do to try to get these guards. I'm going to move Alessandria right there with one of her actions. Then with her second action, she is going to use her throwing knife. It's going to cost one action to do. We'll roll some dice and see what happens. I'm going to be aiming probably at that agile guard. I roll one die and we'll see what the result is. We've got the, oh, we've got the assassin symbol. So that's good 
and bad, it's well, mostly bad. I The one guard is eliminated and your stock of knives is depleted. This card is discarded. So we'll add this to the discard pile of our equipment, but at least we did get to take out one guard. We will eliminate the agile guard. We'll lay him down right there. Now we do probably have to clear that body before our reinforcement step, or if any enemies move on to this thing, we'll have to do a detection test because they're going to detect that dead body and that would be bad news. Alessandria still has one action left, but we're going to move over to Claudio. Claudio is going to also use one of his throwing knives and he's going to try to take out one of these guys. Hopefully he does a little bit better than Alessandria and does not eliminate all his knives. He did not. He got a hit, which is exactly what I need. That is going to take out one of the guards. So we again will lay down one of these guards and he's going to use his second action to move into here and hopefully he is not detected. We'll roll our die and see what happens to him. He got that symbol that means that if we were alert, he would be detected, but he is not, which is fantastic because Claudio has an amazing ability. His ability here says once per turn, if you're incognito, use your, uh, what is it, hidden blade for zero actions. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. So he is going to eliminate this guard just like that, and he has one action left. At this point, I could pick up that objective but that means any person that comes out is going to be alerted and have to make a detection test. Or I could clear all these bodies, but again, if anybody comes on, I would have to make a detection test with uh, Colladio, which could equally be bad. I think we're going to get rid of the bodies, mainly because he has a little bit of an advantage when people come on to help prevent detection tests. So removing all three of those bodies gives us the ability to search them as well. And to do that, we're going to be drawing one of these equipment cards one at a time. Now, it's not always beneficial to grab all these equipment cards because there could potentially be bad things in this deck. I only have two more spots on my character board. You can only hold a maximum of five things. So we'll see. I might draw a couple and just stop. We'll draw our first one here, and we have found a thief. Well, he's not going to be good. For zero actions, place one thief miniature on the square of your choice containing one body. At the end of the turn, if no enemies is in on the thief's square, draw as many equipment cards as there are bodies. Ignore the effect of any investigation card. Hide the bodies and remove the thief miniature. Oh, that's terrible. I don't have any dead bodies on the thing. Well, we gained it. Why not? We might be able to use it in the future. Thief sounds pretty good. Let's draw our second card and see what next piece of equipment we have. We have found a parachute. <laughs> we always find a parachute. He's going to keep his parachute even though he's got two of them. I think we're going to draw one more card and see what we have found. We have found another set of throwing knives. That's fantastic. It's way better than a parachute. So I'm going to discard the parachute and keep the throwing knives. Now, sadly, I'll have to spend some actions in order to get her back her throwing knives. But who knows? Maybe we'll just give them back to her when we go back to our headquarters. Alessandria has one action left. She's going to choose to hold that action. She's going to keep it just in case she needs it in the future. With our turn complete, we'll draw our next reinforcement card. Maybe nothing at A this time, please. Nope. One cross woman and two at B. <laughs> There's still nothing at D. So we'll put out our miniatures. B is not going to gain any miniatures. It already has four miniatures on that tile, so it's not going to get anything, but we are going to place a crossbowman at A. This crossbowman stepping onto A is going to cause a detection test against our wonderful friend Claudio here. So we'll roll our die right here and see what we get. We got again that bell symbol with nothing happening. Oh, that I'm super glad I'm rolling that. Of course, I don't want to roll it once we actually have to flip our token, but for now, that's fantastic. At this point, we are going to move our enemies based on the card and that is going to be west and the only one that's going to move is this guy he's going to move right over here nothing else is going to move because the other ones at b are against this wall they cannot walk through the wall and a is a, again trying to hold on to that objective also he's against the wall too so he's not going to move we'll gather up all our action cubes and move into the event phase let's see what we have found we have found Lodoro. That's fantastic. I've found a thief. Well, I've got a thief. Why can't I use my thief on that thief? We have to roll some dice and see if we actually have anything taken from us. We're going to have to roll one black die for each assassin. If we actually get a hit, we have to remove an equipment of our choice. We can use one to recover the card. Otherwise, I'm going to discard it. We'll start with Claudio. He didn't have anything happen. And Alessandria, she did not have anything happen either. Oh, fantastic. We warded off the thief. Now, at this point, we have completed both of the objectives. Well, almost. Claudio is actually going to spend his first one to complete it. <laughs> I totally forgot I need to complete the objective first. So we're going to grab that objective. He is done. We have completed both of our objectives, but we still have to get to the fast travel points. And remember, if I want a full sync, I have to make one of these guys chase me. And I keep, I keep on making my rolls. We're going to use Claudio again. He's going to move... What? I lied. We're going to use Alessandria. She has her three actions plus her held action. She's going to use one action to move in here. I hope he finds me. This is what I really want to have happen. 
Nope. <laughs> he did not find me. That's terrible. I wish there's a way to actually just let him find you if you want to. You know what? I'm okay with that. I have more plans. We're going to use him. He's going to move two spaces. He's going to move one, two to right there. That way next turn he can climb this tower and see what's up there. With Alessandria's second action, I'm going to use my hidden blade and I am going to dispatch this enemy. And then for my third action, I am going to hide the body. Those are the three actions I'm going to do. I've moved in, used my hidden blade, and I've also <laughs> took care of the body. We're then going to draw our card and see what we get because I've decided I, she only has three things so she can gain more. Let's see what we have. We have, we have one of the courtesans. That's awesome. Now, sadly, I don't really want them. I want something to chase me. <laughs> so we'll put this card away. The interesting thing is I do have an extra action with her if I want to use it, but I don't want to. I want to stay right there, and I want more things to come in here. Hopefully, they can find her. Funny enough, Alessandria is my super sneaky lady. She <laughs> never got found in the last one. In all my other plays, I don't think she got found in any of those. So she's <laughs> really good at it. We're going to see what we have now. We got two at A. That's awesome. I'm really excited about that. And we have one at B. Now, the one at B will not be placed because there are already four enemies there. We'll place our two crosswomen out here on the board and we'll see if they can find her. Come on, I need you to find her. Now before I roll the dice, I do want to mention that these two miniatures, if you ever come to a point where you have to place a miniature down on the board and you can't because you don't have that many miniatures anymore, you, that's a lose condition. Basically your board has been overrun and you are in big trouble. We'll roll to see if they are able to find her. Wow, they both found her. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. We are going to flip this to this side now. So that's good and bad. The good news is they did find her. The bad news is, of course, they are going to still be able to attack her because we haven't gotten to that step of the game. Now, before we deal with everything there, I'm just going to move these two south according to this card. So those are going to be all right there. They're all bunched up at the fountain. They're probably making wishes or something. I can't believe how many people are at that fountain. Back over here, now that we're alerted, I am going to take her off the board and replace her stand with a red one to show that she has been found. We'll place her back on the board. And at this point, the, now that we've moved the enemies, we're going to go into combat. We look at the enemy's card and these figure out how we're going to do this. They are going to roll black dice equal to the amount over here. So these crosswomen are both going to roll one black die. I don't know if I mentioned it, but do realize that every enemy we've been fighting so far only has one health. Let's go see what happens to Alessandria. Hopefully she can use her wily ways and not get hit. She got hit once. Okay, that's okay. She's going to take one damage. When you take damage, you're just going to remove the cube from your your life total right down here. Now that I've removed this cube, she is now considered wounded. If there's any cards that come into play that have to deal with a character that's wounded, she would be considered that. If you ever lose all of them, you've gone into a critical condition and the only way to get healed would be with something like medicine if another hero could come and help you out. With that resolved, we'll move into the next event step. Let's see what we have found. Evade. During this turn, for each of their attacks, the assassins can ignore the and reroll their first attack that was a, oh, that's pretty good. That's a counterattack, or I mean retaliate, not counterattack, oh, same type of thing. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Claudio climb the tower all the way up here. Then because there's this crosswoman up here, I have to spend an extra action to knock him off. There we go, all the way down there. And now he can use his third action to actually synchronize with this tower up here and see what we see. To do that, we're going to grab our card, flip it over, and see what we've got. We have we have a chest over there. Oh, I need to get over there. And then we have, what's this? Another fast travel place? All right, I'll put another fast travel place out there. That's pretty cool. So let's put those on the board. We'll place a chest right here. Sadly, they are not painted. I did have one painted, but my son has hidden it on me because he says it's a treasure. It needs to be hidden. Now I know why they're all standing next to the fountain, because our other fast travel place is there. Now because they found her, Alessandria is going to run. This is going to be awesome because now they can hunt her and I can maybe get this... 100% sync taken care of. We're going to use our first two actions to run in that direction just like that. So she's going to move one, two. Now these are no longer using an objective. They are going to hunt her. To find out how many enemies are going to hunt them, you're going to count the amount of enemies on that board and round up. That is how many they're going to leave the square and hunt her. So we have two, so it's going to round up to one. That enemy is hunting her in this direction. She is now going to move this way with her second one. Again, this enemy will hunt her. And since it's rounded up to one, 
it will move into this square right here. I now I'm going to use my third and final action cube to run onto this building. It cannot chase me up this building because there is no ladder in that location. So we have successfully eluded him finally by jumping up onto this rooftop right here. So we'll place our final action there and that's really going to be the only three actions she's going to do, which is pretty cool. Now, since she is able to elude him, we are going to put this back where it originally originally was where we finally ditched our, our person that was chasing us around the board and we're going to give her back her incognito status. I lied. It doesn't go here. It goes into this square. It goes into the square that you have that, of her destination, not the square that she left from. So they'd still know that she's up here, but she's still incognito because no other enemies on this map tile that she's going to have to deal with. She does have her extra action cube available to her. And at this point, I think she's going to use it because if anything else comes onto this board, they might come towards this and I don't really want that to happen. So she is going to move over to there for her final action. Saving those extra actions can be really key in this game. A lot of times they help out way more than you'd think. With our assassins done, we'll move into the reinforcement step of the enemy phase. We are going to now be on this one over here. So it's going to get start getting really ridiculous. All of these enemies are going to come out onto this board. We'll place one agile guard in C, two crossbow men on D, one Agile Guard on A, and that's it. We can't place again any in B because there's already four people there. Now they're going to move, and they're going to move north according to our card. So he'll move up one, and check this out. All four of these dudes are going to move. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. The bad part about this is see this down here? This is where I have to perform a leap of faith if I want to get off of this tower. Or I can use a parachute if I wish to. And I don't want to because I want to get that chest, and I need to get to this fast travel point over here. It's just bad. These guys should not be moving north. It's, it's hindering all of my plans, I tell you. These two crossbowmen would normally move north, but there's a red marker over here they're going to investigate. So they're going to move in that direction as well. He cannot get up here, but he is still going to stay there because he's going to try to want to get up there. That's, I think, the plan. With movement complete and without any combat, we're going to switch to our next event here, and we have Whistle. During this turn, one time only, one incognito assassin can use one action to whistle and attract a guard neck located on a nearby square, excluding their own square. The guard moves to the assassin's square and is eliminated without performing a detection test. Okay, well, that's not really going to help us either. Oh, now, it's going to go to our turn, but I think this is going to be the end. I think we're going to end it here, but sadly, I'm not going to get that chest. There's just too much going on here, and I'm going to have to move them north again, so that means all these guys are just going to keep on moving up towards this chest. It's just going to be too tough to get. I'm so upset. I like to get chests. Treasure, treasure, treasure. I like treasure. But sadly, there's going to be no treasure this time. Instead, what Claudio is going to do is he is going to spend his parachute. It's going to cost him two of his action cubes, and he's going to parachute down right over to here where she is. That's going to cost me two actions. I have one action left. Oh, this could be pretty interesting because if I do move one more space, which I will, it's going to put me right here. I know I'm kind of far back, but then what we're going to do is oh, Sandria is going to move one as well, and she is going to keep one of her action cubes and save it for the next turn. She's going to stay there. I, within our alert state that we are, I guarantee you something is going to spawn on D, and because of our event card, it will be moving north. So it will be coming to try to attack us. So we're going to have to eliminate everything on that square before we can actually actually get into that fast travel location. Let's check it out and see what happens. Remember all those times I was drawing cards that did not have D on them? Now would be a nice time to draw one that doesn't have anything on D. Nope, it's got a crossbow man. <laughs> He's going to come walking into his, well, hopefully into his death. We'll see how it goes here. But we have to put one crossbow man out on D, two on C, and then we're going to also be placing a cup, one on B and two on A. I'm going to put down one on B, and you're going to say, you can't. you got no place to do it. I actually forgot to move these guys. They should have all moved north one space last turn, according to our previous card. So instead, I'm going to place this guy out here on B. A is going to gain two crossbowmen as well, and we'll have to put one down on D. D is going to be placed right here, and he is going to move north, and I have to do a detection test to see if he sees us. I have to do one for each of our characters. We'll start with Claudio and see how he does. He 
he uh, apparently decided to roll it right on top of Alessandria. Let's try that again. He got seen. Let's check Alessandria, see what happens to her. She also is seen. So both of our characters are going to get their red bases. I was kind of hoping they did not get seen, but they did. That's okay, though. We only have one guy we have to deal with, and I think we'll do a pretty good job. He does get to attack, though, before he we actually get to destroy him. He's going to attack Claudio because I want him to. And he did not hit. That's too bad for him. <laughs> so sorry, buddy. We are going to move into our turn now. I get three actions with each of my guys. I'm going to start with Alessandria. Alessandria is going to use her blade here and try to take him out. She's going to roll two dice and see how she does. She got two hits. That guy is, well, he's down on the down for the count, I guess you could say. And with him down for the count, that means that we can go into our fast travel location here using one action point each, and we have completed the mission. Memory 1.1 is synchronized. We did a fantastic job. We retrieved the keys of the safe. We now have to locate this room in the Palazzo. We also managed to steal the cipher that the Doge uses to encrypt his communications. It looks like Ezio is starting to think of our smaller team that has what it takes to lead the Brotherhood on a glorious path in Venice. He summons us and thanks us warmly and gives us one of his auditory family's relics saying, welcome to the family. We better vote of, what a better vote of confidence could we have hoped for? So we get to gain the reward from envelope 1.1. That is going to be this card right here. It's a cape max per one per assassin, one use per memory. It's his cape here. It says ignore one detection test on a square with one guard maximum. Note this cape only works against guards. Fantastic. So we now have a cool looking cape. We can give that to Alessandria. She's got an extra room for it. So why not? That's going to be all we did for the synchronization. Here's our memory 1.1. We're going to put in that fact that it only took us one of our attempts. It also Forgot to do that for memory 0.4. I get to also place down my 100% sync sticker because I was able to flee up a building. On top of that, we have to figure out how many experience points we did. Now, sadly, we did not get the chest, but we were able to get both of our missions. So we were able to get five experience points. I'll place that right down here. Down here, it says that we want to know if our contract was completed. I won't know that until we move into the headquarters phase. So we're going to do that after we complete this. But if we do do it, I'll just check it here yes or check there no next we get to put our experience onto this track and we're going to go from 23 to 28 we got five more experience points you might see a lot of other randomly circled numbers here and some of them are wrong and some of them might be right we're not uh, I did a little bad math when i did the intro scenarios but we did get to 23 total we that was that's for a fact and we now are at 28 which means we've gone over this level one so according to that our characters are now leveling up the first thing you do when you level up is you get to take your character and replace him with the level one. Claudio now has a special power once per turn. If you're an incognito, use your hidden blade for zero, even if one plus enemies have succeeded in their detection test against you. If one plus enemies remain on your square, become exposed and endure one retaliation. Otherwise, stay incognito. So even if they find me now, I can still kill them with a hidden blade, which is pretty awesome. I love his hidden blade stuff. He then gets to choose one power, or a skill, I should say, from his skill sets that are all from level one. So these are all his level one skills. We're going to check out which one we think is going to be the best one for him. We have eye for an eye. For zero actions, you, if you, you suffered one attack or retaliation by one enemy located in your square, and you are not in critical condition, allocate the number of hits you have received to those enemies as you see fit. Not too bad. We have double whammy during this turn. Each time you eliminate one elite guard with your hidden blade, eliminate one crossman in the same square. Oh, that'd be really good. A combo really good with that. And then the last one is air attack. For one action from a roof or from the top of a tower, jump onto a nearby street or canal square and eliminate one guard before any detection tower. Oh, that's a no-brainer. That's totally what I want. Imagine if I would have had that skill in the last one. I could have jumped off that tower, been able to kill the one guard without any detection test, run up, grab that chest. Everything would have been glorious, but I didn't have this. So... That's amazing. I totally want that. He's going to be climbing up every tower we got now. And I can use this once per memory. Because remember, the only way you can get off one of those towers is by doing one of those leaps of faith. And remember, we didn't want to jump into the leap of faith. There were four guys on there. And that was out of control. So that's Claudio. Let's check out Alessandria. 
Alessandria is going to gain a new power as well. Once per turn, after attacking with a, a melee weapon or a sword weapon, change one of your retaliations into a hit. That's awesome. I'm going to definitely change out. That's amazing. Sadly, I forgot to grab her sword back from the dice tray that we were using when we were rolling for our attacks. I now get to grab a power. Let's see which one we want to get. We can either grab tank which says for zero, before being attacked on a square with one plus exposed assassin or allies, assign all of the dice to you and roll two less. If you fall into critical condition, ignore any extra attacks. It's not bad. We have terror. After having attacked with a sword, up to two guards left on your square immediately flee without retaliating unless they are on an objective base. They are eliminated. Remove their miniatures. You cannot search their bodies. Oh my gosh, they're eliminated. That's pretty good. And we have bandage. For zero, I can recover up to three health without exceeding your maximum. That's pretty good, too. I think I'm going to take this terror. That sounds pretty awesome. Just being able to hit a couple times and being able the other two guys to run, that could totally eliminate an entire four square of enemies. We're back at the headquarters, and we're going to do our resolution steps now. The first one we're going to start with is up here in the hospital. And according to our courtesan here, she's able to take as many health as the level of your headquarters and assign them to one or more assassins in the hospital. There's not anybody in the hospital. And then add one or more health for one courtesan or at most, or give back one to an assassin outside the hospital. We do have assassins outside the hospital that are wounded. But I believe all allies and assassins or assassin apprentices do not need to be healed. If they have been injured or eliminated, they will be available with all their health for the next memory or for the second attempt at a memory that is failed. The only thing I think it matters is if you actually got eliminated, you'd have to put your assassin there and then they would have to be healed by the next time through the help, help of these courtesans or anybody else you place there. I could be wrong and if so, please let me know in the comments below so I can make sure I explain how this works exactly right. Next, we'll move over to the workshop over here. And as you can see, we do have a blueprint here and I have to spend four white and three black cards in order to craft it. And those are these type of cards here, black and white from our characters or from the Vila from what I understand. In order to get the blueprints, you have to de de subtract those cards. Of course, with our courtesan there, it lowers the cost of it by one white card. So I only need to get rid of three black and three white cards. Now these can be from almost anywhere. Now, if we look at our characters, we have a lot of those black cards, but we only have a few of these white cards. I, sadly, I bet you get the white cards more from chess, and I haven't had a chance to be able to really get a lot of those chests. So at this point, we're going to leave the blueprint how it is. I'm not going to get rid of it. Again, I could take cards from our store here, I believe, but I want to save them in case I have other people that want to play, or, for example, if I decide to actually go out with four of them. I mean, maybe getting rid of two of these would work, but I'd still need to get rid of two more, and I don't want to get rid of all of those cards in here. So we'll just hold off for now. Next, we have the shop down here. We have a, the courtesan here allows us to keep one equipment card, and we have to draw four when we look into this shop. We get to choose from these right here. We have a, one of the courtesans. We have a throwing knife. Investigate. Okay, we're going to get rid of those because those don't. you don't have to deal with those when you're doing this. So I can choose from one of these two. Now, I believe we already both have throwing knives, so I don't need that. So I think we're just going to take one of these cards. And I don't have to do anything of paying for it or anything like that. I get one because the miniature is there. Of course, after we finish that area, we're supposed to remove the miniatures from the map. So we have removed them to show that we have completed those steps of the headquarters. I then have to assign this to one of my assassins, or I could put it here in the pool that we could take later or divvy up as we see fit. Lastly, we have the command room. The command room is kind of an important room. What you're going to be doing at the command room is leveling this headquarters up, making all the other areas of this more powerful. The way we do that is we have to equal the amount of successes here and during a roll off here is pretty much what we have to do. We look at the people that are in here. We see how many dice they're going to be able to add to us for our skills in order to get this contract. If we look at our assassins here, it does say command room roll one die. So for each one of these, we're going to roll one die. We have two assassins hanging out in there. Now, interestingly enough, it told us to bring Etso along, but I wish I would have left him there because look at this command room roll two dice instead of one. I think he's going to be there all the time. He's in charge of command. He's in charge of the command room right now. I mean, after all, he's our kind of our 
assassin commander kind of guy. So we're gonna roll two dice, and if we can get two of these successes, that means we've completed this one, and we'll remove this from the map, from the game. Now, of course, we look at the bottom here, it does say remove one success from this contract's difficulty if we were able to get 100% sync on the last memory, and we were. So technically, we only need to get one success. Let's roll our dice and see how it goes. We got our one success, retaliate doesn't even matter because we're not being attacked. So we were able to complete that contract. Having succeeded, we'll remove this card from the game, denoted by this X down here, and now our contract states contract number two, level one headquarters, next level in three more contracts. So we do have to keep on playing to get those contracts up. We'll remove our two assassins from that map, and that is it. We have completed the headquarters part of Assassin's Creed. At this point, we have come to the end of our playthrough for sequence 1-1. dash This game's super cool. I'm really a big fan of it so far. Everything that I've done in this game, I've really enjoyed. I like the tactic of trying to move ourselves around and try to get those objectives. Sadly, I wish I, <laughs> I would not have split my party right at the beginning, but it's okay. It turned out okay. We got 100% sync on that. We did not get that chest again. I've been missing out on those chests lately, but I feel that once that little bell goes to red, it gets pretty brutal pretty fast, and your only best option is to really get out of there as fast as you can, because the more people on the board, the more they're going to damage you, and the potential of getting to critical condition, and oh man, critical condition, that is where you do not want to be at all. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit this bell symbol so you know when the next video comes out and hopefully it'll be the green battle symbol and you'll turn it to red so that way you'll know when all the new videos come out for Assassin's Creed and anything else that happens. Also please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone if you're excited to see if Alessandria and Claudio can continue their romp through Venice in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. At this point, we'll place out our two assassins. We have Claudio and we have Alessandria. There we go. They're all set to fire. Do that. Wow. Did I even say words? <laughs> Were those words? I don't know if those are words. Let's place them again. Before we start our turn, I did forget to move this enemy one space north as opposed when this, when I, wow. <laughs> those weren't words either. All right, let's try it.